Shalom, y'all. It's uh, Brother Michael Israel here, and the title of today's show is Marriage, <clears throat> a Team Sport. Again, it's called Marriage, a Team Sport. <clears throat> and it's kind of, um, like I said, it's, uh, you know, I just did that series on um, the imp- basically the importance of having a balanced approach when we discuss relationships um, because there's uh, on majority of times when relationships are discussed, it, it ta- it tends to be one sided. Okay. And it has to be approached in a balanced way. We can't just focus on one, one person's issues and not the other, you know what I'm saying? Um, we can't just focus on the, on the woman's issues and not bring the man's into, um, you know, discuss the issue that the uh, men are contributing to it. We can't just uh, give solutions to the men and then not give solutions to the women. It has to be a balanced approach because then it puts it all into perspective. So um, in this lesson, it's kind of, uh, it's going to be kind of brief, but it's just a good analogy to, to, uh, so you can kind of more simply wrap your mind around, uh, your relationship and, and how you need to approach things. So a good analogy is, is, um, and and I put a little note here. I, I wrote people need to admit they have a sorry quarterback and stop trying to be the quarterback. Okay, and and why I want to make this analogy on relationships about team is because, you know, I played sports and the teams that do the best is where everybody is doing their role, focusing on their role where, you know, that they were designed to be in. Um, Like in basketball, you have the center. The center of the team is 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 going to be your tallest guy, so he could be right there near the basket to get rebounds. Your point guard is usually a shorter guy who's quick and and is highly coordinated. He can handle the ball while looking around and um, you know seeing who's open to pass the ball to. He he's directing the team stuff like that. If if the point guard is not doing good and then the center gets in that position, it's going to throw everything out of balance. So what I'm bringing this back to is relationships today. Um, like I said, I, I don't make any excuses. There's a lot of sorry men out there. They don't understand what it means to be a man. And this is by design. <clears throat> Since the 1950s, there's been a focused effort on bringing this about, destabilizing men. Um, and like I said, our men need to step up and overcome the odds, okay, and become real men. And that is one of the uh, primary objectives of spiritual combat. But on the same note, what you see out there is you know, and understandably so. I mean, it's uh, action, reaction or whatever. But what you see is a lot of women out there, they get, they're getting frustrated with the lack of real men. And, and what's happening with the response to that is, is these women are having to jump in the masculine positions. Okay. So what you see, what I've seen is, you know, in my relationship counseling, I, I, I've see, I see a lot of feminized men walking around, don't even realize they're feminized. And it destabilizes the relationship. The, the women can't convey to the men, hey, you're, you're walking out of balance. So it creates frustration. And then the women in their frustration, they're having to jump in these masculine positions or roles that 
they are, our society brainwashes them into getting into anyway, because they're brainwashing the men into a feminine role, subtle, okay? Um, and what I've seen is, even in the Hebrew Israelite community, I, I see this uh, dynamic happening, you know what I'm saying? I see a lot of... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'll just bring it straight. I, I, I see women out there in their frustration dealing with these men out here. They're, they're twisting scripture to where they can be, uh, they, they can justify themselves getting in masculine roles. Okay. And my, me or my balanced approach, I'm not going to sit there and go back and forth with a woman on what the Bible clearly lays out for her to be a role. I come at the men harder to, because even if a woman is pushing things in that direction, when a man truly walks in biblical masculinity, and again, for those who, who might not have watched some of my other videos, my definition of biblical masculinity is showing affection to the woman and also direction and correction to that woman. Now, when I say affection, I mean love, empathy, understanding, patience, all that. When I say direction, I'm talking about wise biblical leadership, wise decision making. You know what I'm saying? Where the woman can trust in in you to to lead her financially, uh spiritually, and just make decisions, big decisions in life, stuff like that. And then correction, being willing to be assertive with that woman, being being willing to correct her if she's off and, and not being this girly man where you back down in the corner. So um, what I was saying is when a man is truly walking in that dynamic, things naturally fall in the line. But because... Uh, men aren't doing that. And like I taught in the other lesson, men are, our men are walking in one extreme or the other. They either push over girly men where, where they're not, <clears throat> they have the affection, but they're not, uh, walking in the direction and the correction. They're not willing to stand up to a woman. They're not leading. And then you got the other extreme where there's no affection love, empathy, there's none of that there, but there are these hyper-masculine macho boys. You see what I'm saying? So you got these two extremes. So now what's come out of that is the reaction to that is these women, you know, where it says the woman is to submit to the man, they they, they manipulate, well, well, the Hebraic letter here represents this and this, that, and the other. And then what they come out with is, so yeah, so... You know, I don't got to listen to them, basically. You know, they come, and I'm, you know, I'm just saying, I see all the, I see these, there, there's women out there, and there's men teaching it too, and it like, twisting doctrine, and it doesn't line up with the, uh, the thread that, that runs through the whole Bible of, of the roles of male, female, like, so they'll twist these, these scriptures subtly to fit their agenda, you know, and again, what the reality is, is, and what's going to fix this is just a straight up, no joke, direct balance approach to marriage and relationship and, um, and, and, and just drilling that thing in and teaching it. And uh, like I said, it has to start with the men because, because the Bible doesn't tell the, the, the women to, uh, stand up and contend and fight the men. It tells the woman to win that man over by a chaste and, and shame faced behavior. So being, being a Proverbs, uh, 31 woman, you know? Um, and yeah, <laughs> you know, that's, you know, when you think of the, some of these men that are so out of balance, that's a hard thing to stomach, you know? And, Trust me, when I'm counseling a lot of these men, it's just as hard getting them to realize 
that look this is how you got to walk in this to whatever extreme it is when you dealing with the macho boy hey man you got to be patient with her you got to show her love and you know you can't walk around beating your chest all the time and like that like that reality is so that uh, with a lot of people that reality trying to come into that and and realize that is it's like trying to teach a fish how to ride a bike you know what i'm saying and and, and you and you tell the fish and the fish is like oh I, i'm wet what's wet you know they you can't even begin to convey the concept to them like that's how hard it is sometimes and that's why you know like uh, the bo uh, the bulk of what i teach is on this because i bring a lot of men out of that um i, I was just uh counseling a brother and you know he was going through one of these uh and and a lot of times <laughs> the brothers come to me when they're in a crisis situation it's not cuz when things are going good hey they're not worrying about it but a lot when they make it to me it's almost at divorce or something like that and they can't figure out why you know and um and and what has happened the bulk of them who come to me are because they're over on the feminine side but lately I've been getting people and people have been coming at me and um in fact I have I've counseled a couple people they're like oh my wife you know she won't convert over to being a Hebrew Israelite and I'm drilling it in her head you know what I'm saying and she just won't do it I'm telling her like when she sits down to eat some pork, I throw the plate out the window and she still eats, you know, and they, they got this like uh, hammer approach and everything's in there and that, that's not the way it works, you know. You need to let her eat the pork and wear the outfit she wears. You got to, you need to come up in the empathy area, you know what I'm saying, and, and understanding and patience and long suffering and win her over through her heart. And then all that other stuff will naturally fall into place the same way you came into this, you know. But so so like I said, I'm just trying to show you some examples that it's it's a process. It's a balanced process. It has to be taught on, on both sides. And and <clears throat> the main purpose of this video is to make you aware of people teaching one sided approaches. People, like you, you got a lot of Hebrews that are just drilling in, man up, man up, and don't let that, look, it says here, submit to him in all things. You know, Abraham's wife submitted to him in all things, you know. But you got to give that woman something to submit to. If if she, like like the one the one I always say is like, you want her to submit to you, but you have no direction. Like she asking for investment advice and you talking about, yeah, so this is the investment plan. What we're going to do, we're going to go down to the 7-Eleven and we're going to invest in some lotto tickets. And <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's, you. so you ain't got no direction. You're making stupid decisions. You, you scared to stand up to her or whatever, or you're not loving. And then you expect her to, say bow down to you like the the woman in in um coming to america whatever you like you know it's not gonna happen but when you showing her love when you walking in empathy you patient with her you making wise decisions they see the fruit of your wise decisions when she do something that's off you assert yourself you say look we're not gonna do that we got this plan. We're going to do it this way because it's correct, you know, and it's that. And you standing up and you're doing that in balance. So you're not lopsided. She can't. I'm seriously. She she can't not. She can't resist wanting to submit to you. She's going to naturally do it. You see what I'm saying? It, it, so and like I said, it's a balanced approach on both sides. Um, but say in, on the same note, women have to practice, catch themselves when they 
making it tougher when they're not encouraging their man to lead, to uh, direct, to correct, to, you know what I'm saying? They have to encourage that in their man because it said, there's that verse in Ecclesiastes that says, a, 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 um, I'd rather pull it up, but it basically says, a woman nagging and yelling on a man abideth his courage and maketh a feeble needs. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm going to pull it up here. But that's what it says in Ecclesiastes. When you up there kicking against him, just constantly banging on him, you know. And I know it could be frustrating. And it, and and look, I, I've seen it to a point where you need counsel and you need to talk to somebody. And this dude need to be, you know. But if, you, you know... Uh, that pride a lot of times blocks men and women from admitting, hey, I need to get this thing balanced. I need to get this thing right. The the pride blocks that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times. Um, all right. Yeah, I, I, I want to get this verse. Uh, but yeah, the pride blocks our men from, from wanting to get that help. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, let's see. I got it here somewhere. Let's see. Yeah, but, and, and like I said, um, that's one of the, I think that that's one of the things that one of the main blocks and that's in the Bible to growing in this thing is that pride because you, if you don't admit you got an issue, how are you going to fix it? You know, when you say, yeah, I do need to get this thing right. Whether you're a man dealing with those issues or stepping up and truly walking in this thing like a real man or whether you're a woman, you know what I'm saying? Um, let me see if I can find it. I, I really want to find it. All right, so here it is. It's Ecclesiasticus chapter 25, verse 23. It says, A wicked woman abideth the courage, maketh a heavy countenance, and a wounded heart. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress maketh weak hands and feeble knees. So, you know what I'm saying? It, you and then you got the other verse where it, it said, you know, if your man isn't in the truth, you know, win him over by your. Um, let me see if I can find that one. Just win him over by your chaste appearance, you know, and praying, and direct them to some brothers. You know, use wisdom. Okay, let let me see. Uh. Let me see. Chase, uh, yeah, I should have. I should have had these verses up here, but um, all right. Let me see. I'm gonna find it. Let's, I think I got it right here. Okay. Okay, so it's first Peter chapter three, verse one. It says, Likewise, ye wise, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word. And like I said, there's a t like our men have been feminized by this society, and they need to step up and really walk in this thing because it says if any obey not the word okay that also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear okay and the definition of chaste is without unnecessary ornamentation simple 
or restrained. Okay. So, um, and, and so when these dudes is off, it further messes it up when you jump in the role. Okay. Going back to that analogy, I said, you got a sorry quarterback. He can't, he's not running the team correctly. And you're, you're a, uh, you're a big fat lineman, a center, and you're like, you know what? Forget that. You put the quarterback as the center, okay? And you, are, you're a big old slow lineman. So now you're gonna play quarterback. Well, it's just gonna be a disaster because you ain't designed for that role, you know. And now the whole team gonna just be losing. Instead. You got to use wisdom and encourage the quarterback and and work with him and, and, and do it that way. You know what I'm saying? I've seen it in basketball, you know. Same thing. The center, he's the tallest guy on the team. He could give rebounds. Well, if the point guard's not doing a good job, direct the team, center's like, you know what? You go down there. You go down under the basket. Now, mind you, the point guard's the shortest guy. And then you got the center. He, he looked like Shaq. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm a B point guard, and you he's so tall that they could just steal the ball from him every single time he gets it. He's throwing bad passes. You know what I'm saying? So the team gonna really lose now. So that's not wisdom. So like I said, it requires the the woman to encourage that man. It requires a man to humble down, step up, and you know do what he needs to do. You see what I'm saying? But um, let me see. I got a couple more notes here, and I'm going to wrap this up. So, and one of the notes I put here is, like I said, what I'm seeing is, like, in I see in the Hebrew Israelite community, they're, they're, they're Envying the, the oppressor and choosing some, his ways. Subtly coming right in there, they are choosing this, Gre the, this Greco-Roman beast system's ways, this feminized flip-flop society, because like all the movies, you see women are in masculine roles and, and men are in feminine roles. All the TV shows, you know, the, the guys, the silly doofus and the woman's the wise leader. OK, all the TV shows, all the movies everywhere in society. That's what's getting pushed. And now you kind of see that creeping in among our people. Uh, they breaking stuff down, scriptures down and saying it means this. And it, it doesn't line up with the when you read the entire Bible it doesn't line up. It's out of place. A lot of stuff. I mean, and it said that uh, the simplest thing to look at is uh, Christ's relationship with Israel. Is a, a marriage is a model of that. Excuse me. So if you're a man and you're wanting to know what your role is and all that stuff like that, you need to look at Christ's relationship to Israel. And 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 <clears throat> that's the role you need to operate in. Because he was patient with us, but when we needed discipline, he disciplined us, but he was very patient, long-suffering, you know, leading us, care about. So just look at that role. And and if anybody's bringing these scriptures out that clearly tell the roles of men and women, and they're, if, but if they're trying to bring them out and say it means something else, it's not lining up with that. Just simple concrete thread running all through it. And you don't need to know uh, Hebrew and be able to break down Hebrew to see that very simple, basic concept running all through the Bible. So, and, and on top of that, not only is, is it right there in, in the text, you know what I'm saying? Where you can read it, but in application, cause I've applied it in my, in my life and in counseling, I've applied it to other people's lives and watched them completely turn their relationships around and save relationships and not get divorced or um, if they had to get divorced, end up, you know, 
saving their sanity end up they end up getting in a fruitful relationship and all that but all all that to say i've seen it work in application too it backs it up and i've seen some of the concepts that these people out here teaching that go against the uh male female roles and stuff like that in the bible where they're kind of subtly work uh reversing them or blending the lines of them i've i've seen that be the cause consistently like always be the cause of of uh, marriage issues all the time of divorce and all the when i'm counseling people and dealing with it in the field you know what i'm saying so you know that's a testimony to the fact that a lot of that stuff's off they just all they're doing is kind of letting everybody's brainwashing that they've gotten from society in order to go along to get along that they, they're twisting stuff because it, it it's it, it it's appealing you know it, it it's it's a feel good doctrine you know um and like i said when i <laughs> the brothers that i deal with and the people that i've counseled men and women they come to me in crisis so they're open to what i have to say now cuz they've tried all this other stuff it's not working and they come to me and I tell them straight up like it is, and they're very thirsty, and they take it in, and they're like, yeah, you know, I've seen that, you know what I'm saying? So, all that to say, you know, just be aware of this, and if you don't agree with it, put it in the comments. I'm not one of them dudes who going to get on there and be like, and, and get all emotional with you. I, I like to sharpen my sword and understand where I could possibly possibly be off at. Cause I am willing to consider, but, um, and if you agree with it, put it in the comments, but like I said, I've, I've not only read it and understood it and internalized it and do it, but I've seen it multiple times. So I know when I'm bringing out, I know it to be the truth cause it lines up with the word, you know what I'm saying? And, um, but anyway, with that said, I hope this uh, this video was informative. You're watching Spiritual Combat. I'm Michael Israel, and Shalom.